very badly. So I think they've proven that they are a national contender. Well, here is a second down for the Seminoles, threatening again with a 10-3 lead here. And they run the big back, Smith. Brown bringing him down. I must tell a marvelous anecdote that Bobby Bowden passed on to us yesterday. You know, it's illegal for the famous graduates of schools to recruit unless they are also professors. So lo and behold, who is a professor of drama down here in Tallahassee? Why one Burt Reynolds? And Bobby said, you know, he just went out there and three mothers signed up right away. Yes, and they're very good tacklers, too. <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm four for four with mother. <laughs> <laughs> this is the program that Bobby Bowden turned completely around about a decade ago when he came down here from West Virginia. A coach who was born and raised in Alabama. Good protection for McManus. Over the middle and another completion to Herb Gaynor. Rod Carter defending him. And now, Pat Hayden, he is starting to find those receivers in the middle. And, Brent, I think this kind of pass was set up earlier in the game when Florida State threw the ball to the tight end so much. Everybody's concerned about the tight end. Gainer runs a little delay route after the tight end had cleared the middle out, and it was an easy throw for McManus. Good play selection by Florida State. And a decision here for the coaching staff. They are in fourth and short right now with a 10-3 lead. 8.45 to go, and they're going to call a timeout. Now, that is two of their three timeouts that have been used here in the third quarter. So McManus will huddle up, and Bobby Bowden will make his decision. Big moment. Meet John Madden and Pat Hayden here at the Telestrator. I can't pass this up. This is Tomlin here, who uh, was waiting for this matchup all day. Watch how the fullback and he double team on the steps when he comes in. It takes two men to block stubs, but he did a nice job of doing it. He passed his first test. Did I he? think Bird made a pretty good analyst. He knows how to make yeah. that circle. All I right. can only act. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I don't ride trains either. <laughs> all right. Derek Schmidt is in here on fourth down. Now, remember, Florida State faked a field goal a year ago in Miami and lost McManus, who was injured. This time, Schmidt's kick, no good. Brett, that was another bad snap. It's the third one we have seen today on field goals. Yeah, I, I, when we were out there at practice, you know, Bowden was telling me that he was going to go for the punts every time because they've been very successful with Miami center. And the ironic part about it is we've been, had all the trouble all day with the center. Low snap again. McManus did a nice job of getting the ball set. But the timing was off, I believe. So it stays at 10-3, and that could be a big miss as this game continues to unfold. Now it's the Kings' turn with Walsh at quarterback, Warren Williams and Mel Blatton. They'll try the running game again. Nowhere for Williams. This Seminole defense has been savage. The longest run so far has been five yards. Let's go downstairs to John Dockery. John? Thank you, Brent. I'm down here with a man that Miami certainly could use, Alonzo Heisman. What's the problem today? They can't seem to run the ball. Uh, basically, I think they're beating us to the point of attack. Um, they're coming out very aggressive, and they're shutting down our running game, which is causing problems for the passing game because of the inverse of mind. We have to do both of them well to win. Does this surprise you? Uh, not really, because they always play us tough for us. So I just think we just have to gear down and to just go roll with the punches or something to happen for us. Okay, good luck to you, Alonzo. Right, thank you. Quick drop by Walsh. She had plenty of time. Incomplete. Now the last five possessions for Miami are pretty revealing against this Seminole defense. They have the one field goal made and they have been stopped ever since. You know, looking at Alonzo Highsmith, some of you are wondering if he has signed that contract with the Houston Oilers. He has not. And the stories are that he wants to be traded. So he is still not under contract to an NFL team. Now the third and long for Walsh. Incomplete. In and out of the hands of Blades. That ball should have been caught. And that's the difference between a quarterback having a good day and a bad day like Walsh is having today. Well, now we can see what Burt Reynolds told us because they've got a perfect spot to again go back after Fiegels, and if they don't get there, Sanders set to return. Oh, 
Oh, they got it. Is. There it There's is. The block. Six. Touchdown, Florida State. It was set up early in the day. They got tremendous pressure on and uh, heard a big moment for the Seminoles. Well, he, was, he said it, he was going to do that before the game, and he did it, and that's amazing. Now they've missed an extra point. So Schmidt misfires on a field goal, and now an extra point, which leaves it at 16-3. The right part of the screen is Martin Mayhew, number 32. He's the one who comes, comes in and makes the play. He's one more out. He blocks it, and another defensive back, number 26, Williams, makes the recovery. Academic All-American, Pat. Uh, Bert, thanks for dropping by. Thank you, you got Brent. the Seminoles a touchdown. I Good enjoyed luck. it very much. All right, thanks, we'll Pat. continue in just a moment. So Alfonso Williams, a junior out of Lloyd, Florida, scores the touchdown. Now the Seminoles solidly in command, 16-3. Andrews is the kickoff man. Fielded at the 15. And down at the 28. So tomorrow, a very unusual day in sports. The strike update at 12.30 p.m. Eastern time on CBS. We'll have reporters stationed at all these various ballparks and we'll check in and these are the games that are scheduled and I know that there's a lot of curiosity about these games tomorrow how good are these replacement teams are there some mismatches now with those players who come across the strike line I think the time are all questions we're going to be answering and Brent, I think the time of possession really has been significant often it is but today it has been Walsh with time underthrows the receiver and that was Williams who had come out of the backfield. And now the Florida State youngsters are aggressively climbing verbally up on the Hurricanes. Through the years, opponents of Miami have said that they talk more than any team they've been around. And I believe that some of the Seminoles now are going to repay that favor as long as they've got them down. Miami is looking for a leader, Brent. And this is the time when Steve Walsh or Williams or Brad is going to have to step to the forefront and lead this team have been incomplete. They run Williams on the delay in a passing situation, and the Seminoles now in hot pursuit. One of the things the Seminoles have done a great job on defense at, and that is mixing up the coverage. Sometimes they're coming after Walsh and blitzing, and other times they drop off in coverage. Walsh looked confused. I said at the top of the day that perhaps the worst thing that could happen to Miami prior to this game was an easy win over Arkansas. Before the game even got started, it seemed to be a very relaxed hurricane team out here. There was a little more passion exhibited by the players on the Florida State side. Sometimes you can't tell anything by that, but it is an observation. Again thrown high. Williams working the far sideline, and Miami must punt it away. And the Seminoles can come again. Will Bobby Bowden too again will try to surprise you. He will not lay back. He may come after your punter once again. Most coaches would back off and return. A 10-man front. Dion trying to whip up the crowd. Now Sanders is a superb punt returner. He's got a clear path. Tremendous run by Deion Sanders inside the 45 yard line. As good a punt return as you'll ever see. 
33 yards. Notice how patient he was as he brought the ball back. The key to this, though, although Deion Sanders does a nice job of running the ball here, was how, ma how many defenders the Florida State rush man held up. There was nobody. He had about two or three seconds before any white jersey showed up. He held up the coverage team incredibly well. And he did a lot in his own. So another great coaching move by Bowden's staff after blocking one that time they said hold him up and let's let Saunders bring it back and give us field position to go to work again. Now they pound away and Smith comes free. Great run. At the conclusion of this game, we'll select a Chevrolet most valuable player from each team, and Chevrolet will donate a $1,000 scholarship to the general scholarship fund for both Miami and Florida State. Because uh, Florida State has done such a nice job of mixing up their plays, they really, I think, have taken away some of the aggressiveness away from the front of Miami. Those guys are always worrying about the reverse, and now they're just pounding the ball out of them. On second and short, they run the fullback to the 32-yard line for the first down, and Marion Butts is finally hit by Mara and Jimmy Jones with quarterback Walsh on the telephone talking to the offensive coordinator up in the booth. Even though Miami was terribly impressive against both Florida and Arkansas, Pat, when you look at the number of first, second, and third round draft choices they lost, there really had to be a drop off. They lost nine players from last year's team were drafted, three of them in the first round. They banged that draw play with Smith and he's down. You know, the other thing is, this is the first week that Miami has played games back to back. You know, the first game was against Florida. Then they had a three week layoff to get ready for Arkansas. But this was the first time for Steve Walsh to put game plans back to back and get ready. Jimmy Johnson, three years at Miami. Some three years, huh? He played for a couple of national titles. In trouble here, though. Down 16 3. Seminoles with the ball inside the 35 yard line, and Smith bangs inside the 30. He's short of a first down. It'll leave him with a third down and 4.45 on the clock. Chief Osceola, Board Renegade. And this is the situation that, uh, that uh, Florida State has done such a nice job of getting their ball to the tight end round. What a weapon he has been over the middle, and that's uh, Pat Carter. And we get word from the sideline that Carter injured his leg. Tom O'Malley is in. Young man out of Darien, Connecticut now at tight end. Runs a pattern. And they hit the wide out that time, and Victor Floyd was sliding in behind him to make the reception. There's a penalty there on roughing the passer. Might have been Stubbs. Manis takes a, a big hit after he throws the ball. He held the ball a little bit longer than he ordinarily does. They say Stubbs hit, hit him late. I don't know. I don't think that was roughing the passer call. I, don't, I think that was a bad call. In college football, you tack that roughing the passer penalty on at the end. over on the side conferring <laughs> still tied in the seventh two games to go today and tomorrow and if they stay tied they'll have a one game playoff on Monday so personal foul roughing the passer gets the defense be first down and that ball is put down at the 12 yard line and I thought Stubbs really tried to pull off that Smith replaces Floyd in the Seminoles' backfield. Marion butts the fullback. O'Malley still the tight end. Lewis and Gaynor are the wideouts. McManus on that bootleg. He throws it this time, almost intercepted. Donald Ellis made a diving attempt to intercept it. And couldn't hold on. Vinnie Blades put the pressure on McManus. 
terrific coverage by Ellis. He, he does what you have to do inside the 15-yard uh, line, and that's take the inside away from the receiver. Ellis is going to make a nice play. He had taken the inside away from Ronnie Lewis, the flanker, and then shows his athleticism, almost makes a big interception. Bennett, the fullback. Straight ahead. Battling his way inside the 10-yard line. Taking on three or four Hurricane defenders. Now they come back with Dane Williams at fullback. So against Jimmy Johnson's defense, they are shuttling in two or three fresh players. I'll tell you what else, who else is playing well. That's Mark Salver, the center for Florida State. They have run that fullback up inside here in the second half for big yards, thanks to Salvo's blocks. Carter's injury not serious, and he returns to the Seminole lineup. They are strong to the left. That's the side that Carter occupies. Smith on a cutback is hammered in the middle. Vinny Blades comes in and hit him as he started to cut back. When you think of defensive backs like Ken Easley, that's the mold that Vinny Blades is in. Now watch 36. Smith will cut back, and Blades went after him. This will be a 25-yard field goal attempt by Schmidt, who's had a lot of trouble against this win. But this time, he hits it. So it's 19 to 3. And your thoughts go back to a year ago down in Miami. We were in the Orange Bowl. It was the Hurricanes against Florida State. And the Seminoles took a lead. They were ahead of Vinny Testaverde in Miami, 17 to 14. But then in the third quarter, it was an entirely different story. Testaverde to Irving. And then he went back the other way to Blades. They scored four more times, 41 to 23. Miami beating Florida State. But they'll need all of that kind of rally here this afternoon as they trail 19 to 3 with 2.45 to go in the third. And Brett, you have to wonder if Jimmy Johnson will look to his freshman, Craig Erickson, uh, the highly regarded freshman from Miami, to play quarterback. A very impressive performance here by the Seminoles of Florida State. On the short kickoff, fielded at the 18-yard line by Conley. So the unblemished records, Clemson idle at 4-0, Florida State trying to make it 5-0, Oklahoma State and Syracuse battling Missouri. The last time I saw that score, I think they were tied. Nebraska certainly not a surprise, but Wake Forest has been this year. And of course, the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame off to a great start under Lou Holtz. Complete. And Sanders is there defensively. I'll tell you, that's a good throw because that's a long throw. Very few college quarterbacks can get the ball near a hash and throw the out pattern to the wide side of the field. So the 11 yard gain moves the chains here for the Hurricanes. Under pressure, can't get it off. Eric Crone. Crone that really got a jump on the ball. He came right to the outside to give Walsh some trouble. Terrific anticipation by Crone. Now Crone's at the top of the screen. He is number 94. Watch how quickly he gets off when the ball is snapped. He beats the tackle, O'Neal, very quickly to the outside. A deep drop by Walsh, and that allowed him to get to the outside and make the play.
Second and ten. This is Bratton. That's one of their better runs for scrimmage. That's how tough it's been this afternoon with Mayhew getting him out of bounds. Yeah, I have been so impressed with the Seminoles' uh, defensive secondary themselves coming up and really supporting the run. They've bounced things outside. When Bratton's gotten to the outside, the secondary, secondary's been there to make the play. Seminoles have played with fever down here this afternoon. A little more desire, and that has been the difference. Frequently is, I guess, in an emotional game such as this. Irvin the slot back. Quick pop to Williams coming out of the backfield, and he struggled and battled his way toward what could be a first down with Leroy Butler hanging on. That was a nice little read there by Walsh because we had a safety blitz by Shiver. We saw him sack uh, Walsh earlier. That time he read it and dumped it off to Williams. Henry bringing the play in from the sideline for Miami. So instead of the three wide receivers, they'll go now to two. The Seminoles have used a lot of players here, too, defensively. But that is one of their theories, because a year ago, Brent, they lost three games in the fourth quarter, and they thought because they were tired. This year, they're substituting a lot more players, and they're fresh in the fourth quarter. So the penalty being marked off. The offsides, defense, it'll be first down. Well, next Saturday, Dallas, Texas, 2.30 p.m. Eastern time. How good is this Oklahoma team? I don't, I don't think uh, too many people are going to touch them. We'll have to find out in the Orange Bowl. A bit of rivalry. Texas down and Oklahoma up. Let's see what happens. Williams out of the backfield. He looks the other way, and he hits Henry out of bounds at midfield. Well, there's a man we haven't heard enough of today, and that's Charles Henry, the tight end. If you're taking Irvin and Blades away, Irvin has got to be open. Big target, too. Good receiver. Now it's second and four for the Canes. Moving down toward the one-minute mark in the third period. Williams out again. Goes down the sideline toward him, and he was out of bounds incomplete. He had him It'll wide open. Third and four. He was running wide open down the sidelines, Brent. This would have been an easy score. The ball hung in the wind some. No way he's going to stay in bounds. That's an easy score if he throws it inside. And also, credit the Seminoles with some good tactical maneuvers in that secondary. They just made four substitutions for young Walsh to look at when he comes to the line of scrimmage. They press the wide men. And they've got Bratton against that defense. Bratton breaks free for a Miami touchdown. A 49-yard scoring play from Walsh to Bratton. And now it is the Miami coaching staff that comes up with a big play against that pressing bump and run defense. Well, give Walsh some credit. You just mentioned how they were pressing the wide receivers. And again, what you do is you run Melvin Bratton out of the backfield right up the middle of the defense. It's like a second tight end, except he's coming out of the backfield. He's just no match for the, it's actually a defensive back who was trying to cover him out of the backfield. And that uh, big guy can move. He's 220 pounds, but he can get going. Now let's see what they elect to do with the score at 19-9. Jimmy Johnson will come up and go for two. The quick pass. Oh, he's got it in the corner. And Blades takes a blow there at the end. That was a... We'll see that again in the corner and see what happened down there. Blades made a slick catch working against Mayhew. Martin Mayhew was the defensive back. A terrific touch, too, I want to tell you what. It's just a little fade route. They've run this so many times down in Miami. Hasn't beaten easily. Perfectly thrown right back in the corner of the end zone over the defender's shoulder. Big moment here for the Hurricanes. 
Now following that down in the corner of the end zone, there appeared to be some shoving between Mayhew and Blades after Blades got back up. It is 19 to 11 with 57 seconds to go. Let's take a look at this angle following the end of that play. Now here's Blades. Well, he may have said something, but he gets knocked down by Mayhew, and Blades was going to go back after him. And a teammate alertly stepped in. Let's take a look at this. Now, he catches it. Mayhew trying to knock it free cannot. Blades is held up by that fence over there on the outside. Then the words were exchanged, and the blow was delivered. And fortunately, a cooler head prevailed down there. A Miami teammate ran him off. And it's 19 to 11, 57 seconds to go in the third. Big moment for the Hurricane. Eight-point game, and then a two-point play is going to have to be made by Miami. Here is Ross. A couple yards deep. The alley's there. He brings it out to the 29-yard line for the first down. Let's go back and look at the touchdown. Now, now uh, Bratton is going to come out of the backfield, and you're going to see the double coverage here and here. The three safeties are back. Bratton's going to come right down the middle and catch the nice pass and the touch by Walsh. You see the pressing on the outside, just like you talked about. And then Bratton beats the defensive back inside very easily. Good read by Walsh. So 76 yards in six plays to put Miami right back into the thick of it. Number three and number four. This is Sammy Smith vaulting over a tackler, and then Myra went back out after him and brought him down. So we're live in Tallahassee, Florida. With Pat Hayden and John Dockery, I'm Brent Musburger. Number three, Miami, trailing number four, Florida State, 19 to 11 here. Sold out Dope Campbell Stadium in Tallahassee, Florida. One of the largest crowds they've had to watch the Seminoles. Both of these teams thinking not just of the championship of Florida, but a national title as well. Florida State with a tougher schedule as you look down the road. They must go into Auburn and over to Gainesville to play their arch rivals, Florida. Smith swinging outside. Gets to the 41-yard line before Blades is there to bring him down. One of the few times they've run that play to the weak side, Brett. They've been running the strong side all day. Nice change of pace. Sammy Smith with 22 carries for 143 yards here today. And we come down to the end of the third quarter. Florida State 19, Miami 11. College football will return after this message and a word from your local station. We'll begin the final 15 minutes. Florida State leading Miami by eight points as the Hurricanes strike with a 49-yard touchdown and a two-point conversion to pull to within eight. McManus on the pitch to Smith. Smith with a big afternoon here. Gets to the 47-yard line. Let's get downstairs to John Docker. John. Thank you, Brent. You know, ebb and flow is important in any football game while well, the momentum has switched over to Miami side. Between the third and the fourth quarter, interesting that every player on the Miami sideline put up four fingers and saluted every other player. They, and I asked them what it meant, they say, we win in the fourth quarter. Well, we're about to find out as wholesale substitutions being made by the Seminoles. Five new players on offense. They changed both wide men. One of the running backs, a tight end. And they power Bennett for the first down. Bennett to the 46-yard line with Selwyn Brown bringing him down. And now temper is starting to flare down on the field. This has been a very hard-hitting game. But inside, the center and the two guards and watch number Tomberlin, number 72, just dominate his man and give Bennett a little, little crease there. But the inside guys, the center and the two guards that played sensationally all day. Lots of creases there. Now the officials have let both these teams play, but they might want to think about stepping in here pretty soon. It is first down. Florida State with the wind at their back. McManus to put it up. Intercepted. Intercepted by Danny Stubbs. The big man comes up with the key turnover. You know, we talked about how strong his hands and upper body, body is. He fought off that block. He was supposed to get cut. He was supposed to be knocked down. 
but he made the play. Stubbs is at the bottom of the screen here now. Tomberlo, number 17, tries to cut him, but he doesn't get into him enough, and Stubbs make a very athletic play. That's sensational play by Stubbs. So the senior defensive end from Red Bank, New Jersey, gives the Canes the opportunity they've been waiting for. First down at the 40-yard line now. Walsh drops it to Williams complete. That play has been there all game, and he's run out of bounds at the 32 with Stan Shiver over there. And Stubbs did it. It's hard to believe that he is that big and can move that well. But remember, he was a converted linebacker. Now, Miami with second and short. And the Canes coming back strongly here. Just two yards to go for the first down. Here's Williams. He may be short of that first down as Palmer. Pat, let's take a look here and signal in on the defensive players. McGowan, the ringleader, number 38. He'll set this defense. This is third and short against Walsh. Watch how they react with a goal line alignment. Up over the top goes Bratton. I will never forget Mel Bratton doing that against Boston College and Doug Flutie on that Thanksgiving Day weekend. Scored Bratton four. scored four times in that game, and no one remembers it because of what Flutie did in the last few seconds. When a back gets over the top, it means the offensive line has done their job because a back can only do that if no linebackers are there to put the stops on or put their hands up. The offensive line did a nice job there, allowed Bratton to get up and over. Miami showing great character in coming back in this game. Walsh deflected incomplete. Penalty flag went down. Around the 20 yard line is where that marker fell. The ball was tipped at the line of scrimmage. No flag. So he was about to call pass interference, but because the ball was tipped, it is not pass interference. That's what the official saw late. Lamar Williams, the nose guard, tipped that ball. Now second and ten. And they run the fullback draw with Bratton. Kevin Grant leads the defense. They're all over him. Downstairs again in John Dockery. Doc? Brent, a couple of things here. The wind has died down somewhat, so it's not that much of a factor for Walsh. What's more important is it is incredibly loud down along the sidelines, and he's having trouble giving signals and getting them to his teammates. That could be a factor down here. Now back to you. All right, John, thank you. And he faces a big third down. Eight yards to go for the first down. He has to get to the 18-yard line for a first down. They've got Irvin in the slot to Walsh's right. Over the middle to Irvin, he's got it for a touchdown. 26 yards to Irvin, who lined up in the slot and broke free. There is a penalty marker down. But it was thrown back where Walsh went down, and if that was roughing the passer, they'll mark it off on the kickoff. And I'll tell you, a terrific read by Steve Walsh, a safety blitz. Florida State had been successful with a safety blitz early in the game. Now you know they'll go for two here in an attempt to tie it, but they are very much back in it regardless of what happens. It is 1917. So if the two point conversion fails and there is a low percentage of successful two point plays in college football, you still can win this game with a field goal. They put the ball on the left hash to run some sort of screen play on the right side. He's all alone. Williams for the two. He broke the plane and got across. And Miami showing tremendous character here in the second half. Bounces back to a 19-all tie. 
Two wide receivers on the right side of the screen came inside. Warren Williams out of the backfield. It was a completely a mix-up. The linebacker inside needs to cover him. Easy two points. And we'll be right back. Score is tied at 19 as Steve Walsh rallies the Hurricanes. Today's CFA game is sponsored by Michelob Light. When the sun goes down, light up the night with Michelob Light. GMAC, the official sponsor of America's Dreams. And by Ice Blue Aqua Velva, because there's something about an Ice Blue Aqua Velva man. Miami has scored the last two times it has touched the ball. Six plays, 40 yards in two minutes, and Irvin with the touchdown. The key here is that is it going to be a safety blitz. This is a nickel blitz here. These are nickel backs. They're going to come up. When that happens, the safeties come up, and that allows Irvin, who's right here, to blow right down the middle for the easy score. Now the penalty after this completion to Irvin, who breaks free down the middle, there was roughing the passer, and the ball will be kicked off from midfield by Bennis. Gets it on the ground to a short man at the 13. And Florida State will have possession at the 26 or 27 yard line. And of course, tomorrow will be coming your way with the NFL today at 1230 Eastern Time. We will bring you the latest in the strike update, what's going on at the moment, then the games. And your guess is as good as mine as to what kind of performances we'll have tomorrow. But it'll be unique, and we'll all want to take a look. In the doubleheader game, we'll have Dallas against the Jets in Green Bay, Minnesota. 12.30 Eastern time, we'll get started. First and 10. The ball at the 27-yard line for Florida State. They fake the end around. Smith keeps it and gets to the 30-yard line, where Selwyn Brown was not fooled and tackled it. Boy, that time, the uh, reverse was open. Nobody stayed at home. Had they given the ball to Lewis, he was gone. I'm sure they noticed that in both boxes <laughs> upstairs. Second down. Coming up for the Seminoles. We're tied at 19. It was 19-3 at one time. Here it is. And Lewis comes around. Battled his way for a first down. And Tolbert Bain tackles him. But this will be a first down for Florida State. They move the flags. Danny McManus got out and led the way with a block. You're right, Brent. He's done this three or four times this year. After the, after the uh, handoff, he clears back and peels off and blocks the defensive end. He's done this three or four times this year. There he is right there. There's McManus who's going to put the block. Doing anything he can to help his team win. So he takes Rod Carter out of the way. And on first down, Smith bolts up the middle and almost comes free again with many blades hammering into him. You know, I didn't think anybody could run the ball this effectively against this Miami defense, Brent. But again, the center and the two guards from Florida State have done a marvelous job of just blowing off the ball and giving their, their uh, running backs just little seams. Kuypers and Haynes, the guards, Salva, the center, all are out of Florida. Now two yards to go for the first down. Here is Smith again. Swinging outside this time. Comes across midfield for the first down, and the Seminoles on the move again behind sophomore tailback Sammy Smith. Now he'll take a break. He's carried 26 times for 165 yards here this afternoon. And Victor Floyd, number 27, replaces him. Brent, you've mentioned the substitutions both on offense and defense. And again, Florida State looks a little bit fresher here in the fourth quarter. Jimmy Johnson pacing that far sideline. This is Floyd. Getting to the 46-yard line, and that was Bill Huckins, number 54, tackling him there. Most of the tackles being called right now are by linebackers and defensive backs. That front 
not making the tackles. They're having some difficulty against that Florida State offensive line. Stubbs, of course, a moment ago came up with the key interception, and the Tigers and the Blue Jays continue to battle it out in Detroit. McManus on the sideline. Complete and what a hit there. He hit Dossie, and Selwyn Brown tried to jar it loose, but he could not. Dossie hung on for a gain of 24 yards. When you're a wide receiver running down the, the, in the double coverage, you know there's a free safety there somewhere. You're just hoping the ball's going to get there on time. McManus threw this ball early enough that the safety couldn't make the play. And then he did a marvelous job of hanging on to it. Yeah, that's a well anticipated by McManus. Florida State at the Miami 23. We have 8.29 to go. We're tied at 19. Victor Floyd through to the 19-yard line, and Selwyn Brown bringing him down. And the sequencing of plays here by Florida State. Boom, they pop the ball to the wide receiver. Then they run inside, and we saw Smith on the outside as well. This time, inside again. Salva, the center, does a great job of blocking inside on Myra. And again, it's a safety making the play. They must get to the 13-yard line for a first down. This is Floyd, a fresh back, and he is down at the 19, hit for a loss that time by Randy Shannon, the linebacker. Seconds ticking away here in the fourth. It was 19 to three, Florida State. Miami rallied with two touchdowns and two successful two-point conversions. And the big back, Sammy Smith, checks in against Jimmy Johnson. This is ordinarily a throwing down for most teams, but Florida State has been running draws in this situation all day successfully. Again, they must get to the 13. Five yards to go. And they run Smith to the 14-yard line, where Jimmy Jones brings him down. And that could leave the Seminoles with about a yard to go here and a tie score. And Bowden did not hesitate. He sent Schmidt right onto the field with the wind at his back. He didn't even think about it. An interesting, Brent. He said that Schmidt actually likes the ball on the left hash when he kicks field goals. Surprised they didn't run the ball left. It'll be a 31-yard field goal attempt at 628. If you're wondering about why not go on fourth and one, it is a very long one. There's not much question about what you would do here. Kick is no good. Schmidt has missed two field goal attempts and an extra point here this afternoon for Coach Bowden. It stays tied. We've got 6.17 to go. Now it's Miami's turn, and they've scored the last two times they've touched the ball. Had a surprising call on third down. Well, this is the right hash, and they run the ball to the right side of the field. Now, Bobby Bowden yesterday told us that his kicker likes the ball on the left hash. I am very surprised they didn't run the ball to the middle of the field or to the left side of the, uh, the hash mark. Schmidt struggling here this afternoon against Miami, missing a couple of field goal opportunities and an extra point. Tied at 19. 6.17 to go. He may get another opportunity. That's the way this game is going. Now, the Hurricanes have scored the last two times they've had possession. Completes to Henry, the tight end, on first down. And he's taken out of bounds at the 29-yard line, close to a first down. Let's check in with Jim Nance in New York, Jim. Well, Brent, it's been a sluggish day for second-ranked Nebraska. Not even 100 yards rushing in the first half. Quarterback Steve Taylor's been picked off twice, but two Chris Drennan field goals have the Huskers in front by the score of 6 to nothing. three minutes before halftime. Let's go back to Tallahassee. All right, Jim. Well, certainly Nebraska has played a tougher schedule so far than Oklahoma. Maybe they're wearing down. Second and one in this sequence, and Williams, the tailback, has it easily before he's finally forced out around the 37. Matt Hatchett leading the way. Now, the last two times Miami handled the ball, 
They scored in a minute 48 and two minutes and two seconds, like lightning here this afternoon. And some of the questions about whether Steve Walsh could bring his team from behind have been answered. No matter how this game turns out, you have to feel better about Steve Walsh if you're a Miami fan. And Oklahoma, we'll check in on them next week. Auburn is still ahead for Florida State. On the first down, Walsh throwing. Going long, wants blades. He's covered, incomplete. And a penalty marker is thrown. Mayhew covering blades. The penalty marker is thrown. I think it was offensive. I really do. I think Bla uh, blades interfered. And the way they're bringing everything way back would indicate that's indeed the case. I tell you, I like Blades actually trying to make the play. You see so many receivers not trying to knock the ball away from the defender. Yeah, pass interference. Gets the offense. Lost the down. It'll be second down. And here it is. Very good position by Mayhew, number 32. He was not fooled all day long. And there, Blades with the left hand grabbed his shoulder and his face mask. It was an easy call there for the official. This has been a very well officiated game. Terry Monk, the referee, Tommy Rose, the umpire. So it is second and 25 for the Hurricanes. They run Williams. Gets to the 26 yard line before he's hammered. Now the two possessions I mentioned to you prior to this. That'll show you exactly what they did. Requiring only 12 plays. And climbing back into this game for Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy, who has put together some great defenses, not only as alma mater Arkansas, but up at Pittsburgh and down at Oklahoma State, where he was the head coach. And now he's hoping his defense can continue to hold and his offense can put together one more march and at least get an attempted field goal. He's coming down toward the five-minute mark. He's got Bratton out. Diving almost intercepted. Not a wise throw that time by Walsh. He wanted Irvin, who was covered by Dedrick Dodge. Hey, a quick pressure by Thompson, number 93, forced Walsh out of the pocket. The back, back picks him up, but Walsh is already flushed. It's a tough throw going to your left. Didn't get enough zip on the ball. Now here is a key moment for Bowden's coaching staff. Do they come hard again on Fiegels? Schmidt's having trouble. They've got a 10-man front against him. Sanders set back. They've blocked one for a touchdown already. He gets this one off. Sanders at the 39. He will not break free that time. A 35-yard punt and only a two-yard return. Bernard Clark, the linebacker, wouldn't let him free. We'll be right back. Pat Hayden and John Dockery, I'm Brent Musburger. You're watching the game of the week on CBS television. Tied at 19, number three Miami and number four Florida State. 5.03 remaining. The Seminoles with the ball on their own 41-yard line. Pat Hayden, let's talk about a problem that Bobby Bowden obviously is thinking about right now on the sideline. Well, it's play selection. He has a kicker that has missed three field goals, actually missed two, but they bobbled three snaps. He must be thinking that I have to score a touchdown. I don't want to have my field goal kicker have to win the game. Smith and Bennett are his running backs. They fake and throw out of it to Bennett on first down. And Bennett puts it on Cruz, and he's run out of bounds inside the 40-yard line. A 21-yard burst. The crowd is upset because of the way Bennett went down on the far sideline. That's why you heard the crowd erupt with some booing back here. But Brent, a fabulous call, a little misdirection on, on the handoff, and then he, McManus rolled around, and then Bennett gets hit late after he comes out of bounds. So he's out now. Oh, yeah, that is you very, very late. Should have thrown a flag on that. That's the kind of thing you don't want to see get out of hand in a football game. But the ball is down to the 38-yard line. First and 10 now for the Seminoles. They wrap him up, and Smith breaks free. He Ooh. turned a busted play Ooh. into a first down, or at least close to it, before Tolbert Bain could finally wrestle him out. 
What a great talent, Sammy Smith, who is finally doing what Bobby Bowden has expected him to do here for a couple of years. Watch the block by the center right here, Salva, again, who's had a marvelous day blocking. Again, the draw play and terrific faking by McManus. Everybody thought he had the ball for a moment there. And then Smith does a lot of this by himself. Now, if the wide receiver, number seven, Lewis there, had made a block, that would have been a touchdown. Now, it was just short of the first down. So this is second and one here. And they come with the fullback, Bennett. Edgar Bennett out of Jacksonville, Florida, for the first down. I want to tell you something about this day Sammy Smith has had. We came in here with doubts about this young man. You wondered if he was a quitter, wouldn't play with an injury, if there was a problem involving him. Well, he's carried 28 times for 178 yards. He's made great runs. That was Stubbs who had him cornered on that last run before he pulled away. He has been the workhorse. He is carrying them now. I give that build up, he'll probably fumble. But it's <laughs> first and ten, and he's played spectacularly well here this afternoon. comes again. Oh, he is a load. Then he blades rides him down. Oh, this is the making of a great back. You know, Bobby Bowden wants to give him the ball 30 times a game, but he did fumble some, some early in the season. That's one of the reasons they had. Salva, the center, once again, makes a dominating block for Sammy Smith. Doubles down on the tackle. Big hole there for Smith. You've got to be impressed with Mark Salva. Now they have taken Sammy out to give him a rest, and Dexter Carter replaces him, and there might be an equipment problem. You can see him lifting the jersey to adjust one of the... Start fumble. The ball is free. Miami recovers. McManus and the center had a mix-up on the snap, and Benny Blades gives the Hurricanes another opportunity at the 329 mark. his heart out on that drive and then the ball is fumbled away as McManus pulled away he did not have possession I think he pulled away early here or the, or the ball came up short and then he kicked it and that's why Benny Blaze the free safety was able to make the recovery but what a break for this Miami team we're tied at 19 we have 328 to go in Tallahassee this is the season of the tie Williams with a big hole in the middle I want to watch Benny Blades on this fumble recovery back here in center field. He's the bottom right hand corner. He's number 36. Now watch how alertly he reacts to the loose ball. Right now Benny's got it. Wraps it up. Just falls on it and smothers it to give the Hurricanes the opportunity. This is a first down. And it is Williams slashing in. Seconds ticking away. I said this was the season of the tie. Last week, we were in Baton Rouge, Ohio State, and LSU wound up tied. And yesterday, or on that same afternoon, Tennessee and Auburn also wound up tied. Again, the, the wind has picked up here again a little bit. Miami has three timeouts. They've got a long way to go before they're in position to kick a field goal to win the game. On second and seven. Walsh eludes the pressure. Incomplete and another dangerous throw on the move. We got a little moment here to break away. And let's check in with the development of Jim Nance. Jim? Well, Brent, Todd Ellis on a touchdown pass that just put South Carolina in front. But only 42 seconds later, Steve Taylor teams up with Richard Bell. It goes 78 yards. And back in front is Nebraska 13-7. to And less than a minute to go before halftime. Back to Brent and Pat. Yeah, the Cornhuskers show a little character. I'm bouncing back in a big one. In a couple of weeks, they draw Oklahoma State. Couldn't that be interesting? I still want it. Here it's 19 all, 2.30 to go. Miami with possession and a third down. Irvin's got it. Irvin's free. Irvin's gone. Touchdown, Miami. 73 yards. A tremendous.
tremendous comeback here by Jimmy Johnson's football team. And Brett, that was another audible by Walsh. He has audible for two touchdown passes this half to Michael Irvin. The defense is set up to take that pass away. It was a double zone. That should not happen. Stunned silence on the Florida State bench, but they still have 2.22 to go. This time, they'll set up for the one-point extra point. They've been successful on two two-point conversions, and Cox nails it perfectly, 26 to 19. And Florida State with 2.22 remaining. Steve Walsh has grown up a lot today. Again, the double zone, the safety's supposed to take that play away. He didn't get there in time. His angle was bad. And Michael Irvin, it's good night. The Kings lead it. So Michael Irvin, who scored his second touchdown of the game, has caught four passes for 132 yards, Pat. And Brent, two errors. The first by the corner here, Mayhew, who doesn't bump Michael Irvin. And the second by the safety, Dodge, who goes too flat. He's got the deep outside. He goes too flat, and that's why Irvin gets behind him. Remember, it was an audible by Walsh. And this for Irvin, his seventh career, 100-yard game. And folks, he's only a junior. Number 47, Michael Irvin. Now Bennis kicks it off. Fielded at the 10 by Ross. Out of bounds at the 17-yard line. So next Saturday, our game of the week moves on to Dallas, where Oklahoma will be heavily favored over Texas. That's a big rivalry, and if ever the Longhorns are going to respond with a big game, it'll be next Saturday. And Texas is one of the very few teams that holds a series edge on Oklahoma. Brent, you know, uh, Florida State wasted two timeouts, remember, early in this half. That weighs heavily now because they only have one remaining. And they trail at 26-19. They were ahead 19-3 late in the third quarter. Now McManus with time down the middle and incomplete. Wanted Lewis. Ronald Lewis is flanker. Michael Irvin is out of the Fort Lauderdale area. And when you talk about states that produce wide receivers, quarterbacks, running backs, defensive backs, you now must consider Florida to be the most prolific at those particular positions. Just one talented athlete after another. I think of the days of Anthony Carter going up to Michigan and playing up there. Lorenzo White now at Michigan State. They are scattered all around the map. So the second down play for McManus in Florida State. Pusher in the middle. Stepped away. Incomplete drop by Pat Carter. Should have had it. But I'll tell you, that's, this is Stubbs' kind of game, Brent, now, because he can really come off the corner. But Miami's playing a double zone. That means you fi got to find a way to get the ball to the tight end or an outside receiver on the inside route. Here is Stubbs again. A tremendous pass rusher. See how strong he is, too. Tips the ball away from the tight end. Carter. This third and 10 at the 207 mark. And they run Smith to the 29 yard line. Strange call on third and 10 with less than two minutes. He's been very successful running the screen pass earlier and getting the ball to your wide out and tight end. Now they've got fourth down with 142. I can't believe they're I can't either. Considering I was about going to say I didn't see the punter come on the field, but they're oh. going to go for oh. it. Oh, with a minute and a half. Oh. No. It's fourth and eight. And I think you, a lot of coaches would have gone for the turnover, but they get it. Unbelievable. They make it work. And that was Herb Gaynor. That is the, a strange decision, but obviously it worked out. So it's a good one. I, I it guess so. Way. <laughs> and that area of the field, though, I can't believe it. Clock has stopped momentarily as the chains move at the 116 mark. Now it's up to McManus and the Seminoles to rally. Carter quickly in for Smith at the tailback position. 
He wants Carter. And Carter stayed in bounds. Now he gets his way out. At the 49-yard line, Tolbert Bain. So Carter knew exactly what he was doing. 12-yard gain, working with that lone timeout remaining, down to 105. And let me tell you something that's interesting about this scenario. If Bobby Bowden scores here, a lot of folks are going to say he's going to go for the two and the win. That's not so. Bobby Bowden will kick that extra point and get out of here with the top. If that happens, we'll tell you about that story because he's been burned previously in situations like this. And he said, as far as the national championship is concerned, it won't affect me as much to tie as it will to lose. Now, quick pass by McManus, and Carter had not turned around initially. You get a guy who will go for it on fourth down will go for the tie. That's, that's incredible to me. <laughs> fourth and eight? Doesn't mean how you gamble on that. I still can't believe you made that call. Everybody was so casual about it. A minute three. Clock stopped here as they get reset. There is Coach Bowden. Now McManus ready. Down the right sideline, wants Carter who makes a leaping grab inside the 20. What a catch by Dexter Carter against Benny Blades as good as there is. A 31-yard game. The Seminoles ain't dead yet. Danny McManus has tremendous confidence in Dexter Carter because this ball shouldn't be thrown, really. The, there's, the, there's coverage right there, but he gives it plenty of air. He knows Carter is a great leaper. And that is one sensational catch and give McManus credit for giving his receiver a chance. Inside of a minute now, McManus going for it all. Touchdown! He got it! He got Lewis! of Jacksonville, Florida with a spectacular grab in the corner of the end zone. It's 26, 25, and now the story that I told you. You're going to hear some booing here, but this is one thing I want to check. And Derek Schmidt is coming on the field. Now remember, Schmidt has struggled here this afternoon. Now some of the players are over here on the sideline. And McManus and some of the players may be disagreeing with what the coach wants to do. And this was a frozen rope by McManus. You cannot throw the ball any better than he did on that one. Sensational comeback. Uh, we'll be right back while they talk about this huge decision in Tallahassee. He'll get his two tights, apparently. Lewis, the wide man. This a critical decision. And this is a coach who called Johnny Majors this week and said, Johnny, you did the right thing. I think this is the right call. In my estimation, you always tried to win in college football. And you know that I disagree. <laughs> that I say you always try to win a national championship in college football and that a tie doesn't hurt you nearly as badly as a loss would. And a two-point is so tough to do but let me tell you something. This man has rolled the dice here the last two minutes, and who's to disagree with what's happened in this game? He, I ain't the coach. I he, don't have to pay the He is on a roll. He work. made it on fourth and eight. And again, I think this is the right call in college, college football. You and I will continue to argue that. <laughs> well, I, I guess Tom Osborne might too. Yeah, and I, you know, I do not want to let really an argument interrupt what has become a magnificent football game, regardless of what happens here. I. I've got to take my hat off, first of all, to Jimmy Johnson of Miami for coming back when they were down 19-3. That was an incredible comeback. Then, moments ago, to put this in perspective, Florida State had that fourth and eight. They didn't even show punt. And now it comes down to this. You'll watch the play, and you'll see what happens. Jimmy Johnson will ice him up a little bit. He wanted to see that formation that they came out in. Jimmy wanted to take a look at the formation. Now he'll huddle up. Bobby Bowden's turn for her make a decision. Tallahassee has come down to this. 
The coaching staff earlier this week decided to go for the tie. But the players have said, let's forget about the national championship here. Let's try to win this game right now. Let's win this afternoon. And after all, if this is successful, then Florida State very much on track for a possible national title. Miami has called a timeout after studying the formation. And here they come. The two-point conversion after the touchdown. No good. Miami leads it 26-25 with 42 seconds to go. The gamble fails in Tallahassee. Hey, a funny call there. Pat Carter, the tight end, I thought was open outside in the flat, but McManus tried to throw it up in the air, thinking that Carter could outjump the defenders. But the ball was very much underthrown. Never gave Carter a chance. Watch him off the line of scrimmage. He's the tight end. He's out in the flat open quickly. But decide to throw it up, up for grabs. Bubba McDowell, who earlier in the game caught Sammy Smith from behind, was back there defensively to bat the ball away. Now, 42 seconds to go. You've got a superb kicking team obviously you can try the onside kick you are still not finished here this afternoon you've got the wind at your back Florida State has had difficulty with the field goal team here and of course before you can think about a national title you got to win the championship of Florida Miami already has beaten the Gators and if they hold on to this one point lead here this afternoon they would indeed be the champion of Florida and then they head for what everyone says is a rather soft schedule until the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame move into the Orange Bowl. But this one is not over. 42 seconds, an onside kick possibility. Some of the players with good hands moving up close here for the Hurricanes. Andrews will kick it off. He has told his special teammates, specialty team, which side he's going to go with it now. And nine Miami players are up near midfield. They move everybody off to his left. He goes in that direction. And Miami falls on it at the 49-yard line. Brian Blades, the wide receiver, right there to fall on the ball. And the Hurricanes are going to win this game 26 to 25 after trailing 19 to 3. What a sensational game by both teams. Still like to call uh, Bobby Bowden will get second guessed all week long, I'm sure. Well, you don't get second guessed as much when you go for the two by the fans and uh, that's true you're right I, you're I right. think it's more the coaches who yeah. say sure. you know in the long run then it looms big to have that tie I mean I, I think that's the group that, that thinks the other way and it's tough on coaches you know that yep. and it's tough on these kids to have battled the way they have this afternoon and, and come up feeling as empty as they do I, I don't think Pat the public or the media will second guess yep. him that much he's very popular with the call uh, what I find interesting is that they talked him into yeah. changing the decision. He, we discussed that length yesterday and because it, you know how I feel about it. Yeah, and also it's interesting because he was very set on what he was going to do if the situation arose. He's been burned on it before. Yep. That's exactly, that's exactly now, what he said. Now, meanwhile, Jimmy Johnson, let me tell you something. Everybody remembers he's lost national championships. Three-plus years, folks. He's lost only one road game during the regular season. That was up in Michigan. This was a remarkable comeback. Remember it. This was a great performance by Jimmy Johnson's team. Give him a lot of credit. Michael Irvin had a big day. Caught that touchdown pass and one other one. But these guys battled their hearts out here this afternoon. And it's unbelievable to me that for the ninth time in... 10 games Miami's been able to win here let's go downstairs now to John Dockery John thank you Brendan with Bobby Bowden a tough decision at the end what influenced you I was going to kick it and I said dang we've missed about three we missed three I couldn't gamble on another miss during the week though you said you would go for the tie if it came down to that and you I would, would have it. yeah I would have but we missed three in a row I'm afraid we'll miss four I, it's just my fault losing confidence I guess any regrets at the moment well I wish I'd have gone for it and made it but if I'd have gone for it and missed it I'd have had regrets the other way. Gutsy call, Coach. Uh, good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. 
All right, John, thank you. And uh, Bobby Bowden, he is a class act all the way. Now, the Chevrolet most valuable players in this game are Michael Irvin of Miami and Sammy Smith of Florida State. Both players with big days. And a check in the amount of $1,000 will be donated by Chevrolet to both schools. Jimmy Johnson is now with John Dockery. So let's go back to Doc. Jimmy Johnson, incredible comeback. It was like two different games. First half, you were flat. Second half, you are explosive. Well, I was concerned about our practices all week long. We did not practice uh, well early. And, and Florida State's got a great football team. They have a great football team. We did not play as well as we're capable of playing. But I tell you what, this team has got so much character. You know, we've been to Norman, Oklahoma, South Bend, Indiana. You name it. You know, we beat Florida on the road, Florida State on the road. It makes no difference where we play. This bunch has got something special inside of them, and they are determined to win. Jimmy, let me put you on the spot one. I mean, Bobby Bowden had a tough call to make at the end. What would you have done in his shoes? Gone for two points. Uh, we don't play games to tie. Congratulations on the win, Coach. Good luck to you. Thank you. All right, John. Thank you very much. So Mel Bratton and the Hurricanes stage a dramatic comeback here in Tallahassee. We'll be back after these messages from your local stations. And the final score.